All right, so thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Lavenda Juhas, and I'm on the OpenStreetMap US board, but this presentation is basically from my day job. I'm also a research assistant professor and the assistant director of geographic information science at Florida International World University. So basically, my research is all about uh, understanding uh, user generated data from a spatial point of view and a geographic body shape. Um, before diving into the presentation, I think it's good to acknowledge that before us there have been other uh, indigenous peoples in this land and they have throughout with this land throughout the generations. So um, this presentation, as I said, is from a research point of view. And I've been doing Western research for a while. And um, what you need to know is that, you know, it's a great data source is being used in science, but most of the research actually is, is data driven. So obviously, by nature, first, when we have a new data source, we need to understand these characteristics. So a lot of research effort has been done on the positional accuracy of OpenStreetMap, uh, understanding the completeness. Basically, that's a, these are the basic questions that we need to understand to figure out whether we can use this data source, the OpenStreetMap, uh, for any, any purpose. So um, on this slide, I'm just like showing a couple examples uh, about understanding data completeness. And, and you know, research showed that there are like different kinds of cities. Uh, some of them are like pretty complete. Uh, some of them are less complete. And basically it ties back to the local community as we all know. Um, also, after many, many years of research, I think this paper came out uh, about 2019 or 2020. Basically, like using like different indicators, uh, we can actually predict data completeness on, on a global level. And four or five years ago, research found that OpenStreetMap on main roads or like major roads, it was over 80% uh, complete when considering the whole globe, which is, which is pretty much amazing. And it stands as a testament for, for this project. Um, a couple of years ago, we did a literature review. Basically, we looked at the scientific literature. We looked at like what other scientists uh, do about OpenStreetMap. Uh, and we tried to understand basically whether there's an interaction between researchers, scientists, and the OpenStreetMap mapping community. Uh, what we found is that the, the majority of the research actually just uses OpenStreetMap as a data source. You know, it's freely available, it's under an ODBL license, it's great. Uh, you know, it's global in scope, so obviously it can fuel a lot of research applications. Um, so it's not a big surprise that a lot of uh, scientists just used OpenStreetMap uh, as a data source. Um, so when we looked at the perspective of people doing research with OpenStreetMap about the community, um, we found that only like very a small portion of scientists and researchers acknowledge that OpenStreetMap is actually a social project. You know, it's made out of people. Uh, those people are actually the ones that generate the data. So what we've seen in the previous presentation, like giving a big shout out to the OpenStreetMap uh, and to the community is very rare actually in science. Uh, we also looked at the engagement, we're trying to figure out like how scientists interact with the OpenStreetMap community. And basically we, we, we found the, the same thing. Um, it's very rare that, that even it gets acknowledged. Um, obviously there's like other types of OpenStreetMap research that, that goes beyond just understanding completeness and positional accuracy. So a lot of research went into also understanding users, like the mappers who generate the data, but obviously from a data-driven perspective. So we know that there are different like mappers, different types of uh, people. Some people are interested in trails, so they would just only uh, primarily map tra trails. Some people are really organized. Uh, basically, they create like surveys uh, to systematically map uh, 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 places. Other people just map randomly. So this is also to illustrate that it's a diverse social uh, project. And there's a lot behind the scenes and a lot of different people uh, that, that build these uh, data sources. Um, Jennings Anderson, you have uh, probably like seen him around. Uh, he did a research a couple of years ago. And basically, he was the first uh, person to show that OpenStreetMap is also is being used by corporations. And these corporations are giving back to the community by, by editing data. Um, but as I said, all of these previous studies, well, most of them, uh, don't really consider OpenStreetMap as a, as a social project. Uh, so they just like use it from a data perspective. Um, so what I'm thinking and the, the topic of this talk is to look at OpenStreetMap from a different lens. Basically, I'm planning to do an experiment that would look at the OpenStreetMap community from a different uh, point of view. Still, it would be a data-driven study, but I would like to understand like how the community organizes itself. So um, I 
we know that OpenStreetMap is based, out, based on self-organizing communities, for example, in the United States and in uh, uh, other countries as well. And we also know that these communities use standardized tools to communicate. For example, there are mailing lists, there are wikis. Um, and basically, these are the primary tools to, to organize the community that will later create the, the data. So the idea is to look at these uh, uh, you know, different mechanisms to create data from a data point of view and utilize this to try to understand the community. Uh, if you have ever looked at the OpenStreetMap wiki, you know that uh, actually you can uh, check the version history of a page, so you can actually get a pretty accurate account of how that piece of information was created throughout the years. Um, if you actually go on a wiki page, you can get the history and you will get a list of all the previous contributions with usernames, uh, timestamps, and so on and so forth. Um, so what I'm trying to do is to uh, get this data on, on a on a country scale. So here's an example for the United States. Um, the wiki.openstreetmap.org is actually a software called MediaWiki. Uh, it has an, an API. So it is actually possible to programmatically get a history of all the edits. So what I'm doing, yeah, I identified uh, uh, like you know prefixes of relevant pages, for example, United States, uh, different uh, states. And I am in the first step. I'm then querying. I'm trying to find basically all the relevant pages for the United States. Um, so when I search for United States using this like prefix method, I would get obviously the main page, the U.S., but also like other sub pages for public lands and even down to like you know multiple levels. So uh, at the second step, I'm I'm building the history of all the edits in the wiki uh, that have ever been made in the United States. Um, another data source that I'm trying to use is mailing lists. Um, for example, the talk US, uh, you know, it's a really great source of information. A lot of good conversations are happening. Uh, a lot of times, like this is the, the place where people agree on tagging practices and so on and so forth. But again, it's freely available. If you go to the, the mailing list archives, then you can get, again, a pretty detailed like, list of all the mails that have ever been sent to the, the mailing list. And again, you can get uh, usernames, uh, the timestamps, and uh, topics, uh, and so on. Um, this mailing list is actually running uh, GNU Mailman software, and uh, you can download it in, in a file format called Mbox. I think it was developed in the, in the 80s or early 90s, but it's still very usable. Um, so what I'm doing uh, in the first step, I'm identifying all the, the mailing lists that are used in the US. Uh, these are the ones that I'm using right now, the talk US, import, uh, and then there are some like more localized uh, ones. And in the next step, I'm building a history of these activities. Um, so this is where I'm at right now. Um, so for a couple of years, I analyzed, it looks like over five years of data. Uh, we can see that on average, there's like 21 users editing the wiki in every given month. Uh, the maximum I found was 44, minimum is, is nine. Um, and pretty much around the same amount of people contribute to the, to the mailing list. Uh, obviously, it's not a huge number if you contrast it with, with map edits, because we're talking about like thousands of users that, that contribute uh, um, every month. Um, so the idea would be to, to try to understand OpenStreetMap uh, through these like social contributions. Uh, my hypothesis is that increased social activity will eventually result in increased data quality. Uh, because if you think about it, if people talk about tagging, then you know, probably they agree on something and that will uh, result in, in like, you know, better quality data. Um, so I have some questions. I want to figure out if we can use community activity, for example, as a proxy for mapping activity. And if so, then we won't need to use like huge uh, hundreds of gigabytes of, of uh, uh, historical dumps to understand data quality. Uh, I, as I also mentioned, I'm trying to understand if increased social activity will eventually result in better data quality. And if it does, then you know all these indicators can be used uh, in, in a lot of different models that would predict uh, data quality. Um, I'm also, in also interested in figuring out if we can suggest new contributor types. Uh, 
you know, if you think about it, there are, for example, board members who previously were very active in mapping, like in hands-on mapping, but they move to like different roles. Those are also really good contributions that contribute to the overall health of the project, but you know, this cannot be captured just by analyzing map edits. Um, so this study was, was will still be data-driven, but it will be community-centric. So basically, this is the idea. Uh, it's in the very early stages. Uh, mainly because of time constraints, um, but I really want to uh, look into this topic in, in more detail, and hopefully I will be able to present some results at the next State of the Map US uh, next year. Um, and basically, that's my presentation for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. 